<laughs> most of you know, most of you know. Okay, so even though I call myself a somatic coach, I kind of do that because I just am so passionate about the somatic work and it's so new to attachment healing. But my background is in cognitive behavioral therapy. Belief work has been a huge part of my own journey. Um, so it doesn't actually come into the work that I do. So what are the core beliefs often of someone with an anxious attachment? And I would love for you guys to share which ones you relate to, like as I go, um, but also afterwards as well. I've lost the chat box. There we go. Thank you, Valentina, for sharing. So, and of course, this is a partial list, so I could go on and on and on. It could be much longer. So core wounds will include feelings of inadequacy, the expectation of rejection, especially because you might have continued to have that. I put parent, forgive me, from caregiver, from someone in your early years. And it's that consistent rejection that think of that unpredictability, how many times you go through that rejection and then that feedback loop, because we tend to choose people where there will be rejection as well. So there's lots of opportunities for rejection plus life. Plus life is full of rejections. All right. If anyone's on a dating app, been on a dating app. Or not been on a dating app, it was dated. You, we get rejected by a healthy partner when they say no i'm not free this evening oh god that can feel like rejection i can say to my partner like oh do you want to come for a coffee with me and if he doesn't want to oh much better than that now <laughs> but sometimes he doesn't want to <laughs> um doubt's own ability to self-soothe who said that somebody said susie i think it was you this to me was like a massive breakthrough when I realized, oh, it's actually even a symptom of anxious attachment. Someone with, someone with an anxious attachment doesn't believe that they can soothe themselves. I used to literally think I can't do it. There is also, I know this sounds contradictory, but there is also a real difficulty with self-soothing. There you go, I shared them for a little while so you got to see them. Now I want to be here with you guys. So it's like if you've been doing the self love challenge on one of the days I shared the double arrow, the double arrow is the first arrow is the negative, the bad, the rubbish thing that happens in our life. The second arrow is how we shame ourselves, beat ourselves up, give ourselves a hard time. It's like the second wound that we didn't need. I see this with the self soothing, the first arrow being we do struggle to self soothe. That is a fact. We struggle to regulate ourselves, struggle to think clearly, struggle to stay in the present. And then we beat ourselves up for that. that I can't soothe quick enough. Uncertain that they're loved, uncertain that everyone, anyone will ever choose them, uncertain that their friends really like them. It might do for a little bit and then we might forget that again and doubt it again. The, the love that we feel can be short-lived until we forget and doubt it again. Negative expectations about love and relationships and other people. Expectations, they're going to let me down. Love is rubbish. Love sucks. Love hurts. Relationships always end. People always reject me. Here's a key one that we can ignore or not notice. Negative images. We will often be so activated that we are, it's because of them, it's because they haven't messaged me, it's because that happens, it's because I need this. And the reality is we're not even noticing the images that are actually going through our mind of us alone when we're old, or the time that we have been rejected in the past. So the images are really, really key. The beliefs that other people are better that know more, that do more, that are more secure, 
that have the choice over whether we're in a relationship or not. We put so much value on that other person, on what's outside of us. We often feel like we have no choice and no agency because we give it to other people. We forget that we get to decide things too. If there is a conflict, if there is a rejection, if something goes wrong, if I spill this glass of water, we take it very personally and rather than acknowledge that I spilt that glass of water, it's, I'm so stupid, I can't do anything right. And it becomes about the core of us as a person and make no mistake, we can even link that to a relationship. No, but no wonder nobody wants me. We can do something really simple in our day. Something can happen within our day that would happen anyway, because we're humans. And we will make it about our core belief that I'm stupid, that I'm ugly, that everyone leaves me. Core beliefs, what do you guys relate to? Self-soothing can definitely be replaced by numbing, which sometimes you can be so unaware. Yeah. There's sometimes it's sometimes there's a time and place for numbing. Sometimes. Like when if we're really, really in the thick of it, we might need to sometimes just numb out a bit. We can choose healthy, unhealthy numbing. What I mean by that is, and this is no judgment on your strategies but maybe um, watching, I don't know, binging Netflix might be a healthier option than two bottles of wine. Netflix is off. It's YouTube for me. I sometimes will still, when I now watch YouTube, it's like I'm, yeah, allowing myself, relate to all of them. I think I do as well. Others are better than me. And no one is. And we slowly, I'll go into the, I was about to go into the healing, but I'll, I'll hold off. Okay. So many things can crop up and usually it's from a place of lack. Yeah. All relationships will end. Mm -hmm. We don't know, we'll never know anything for sure. You know, learning about attachments and healing never gives you certainty. And like uncertainty will always be certain. But when we start to develop our secure skill set, which is at the core of what I'm trying to support people with and am supporting people with, it can make it easier to cope. We don't make it all about us. And relationship with ourselves never ends. I want to take a moment and let you know a bit more about the Attachment Recovery Gym because so many of you are gonna benefit from this space. The Attachment Recovery Gym is an online membership that supports you to get in touch with and exercise your most secure self. You can join this community when you have reached the point where you know so much of the information, yet being able to change and put that into practice is really difficult. You see yourself defaulting back to old, painful patterns. It's an online membership space where you can take everything that you've been learning that includes all of the things that I'm talking about in this video and my other videos and on my Instagram. You can take all of that and you can put it into practice. If you have a reoccurring relationship issue or a specific trigger where you feel stuck, then fear not. The Attachment Recovery Gym marries three core components that are going to support you to be able to change and self-soothe in the moment. That is community, accountability, and education. When you become a member of the Attachment Recovery Gym today, you get immediate access to a library of resources and a schedule of classes that strengthen your secure self, just like you were working on your physical health, because that's something that I believe is really important. 